and welcome back to another episode on the Triple R channel. Eddie, your host here. I'm going to walk you through the next step on preparation of this uh, Gallardo Spider for a twin turbo kit. Um, today's goal is to take off the airbox, the bumper, and the wheels, and hopefully get started on getting the exhaust taken apart. So. I'm gonna show you some things, show you how easy the process is, and let's get to it. First things first, here's some things I'm gonna point out before I go through it quickly. You want this tray out of the way because we're gonna replace the spark plugs as well. So it's pretty simple, easy to access hardware throughout this bin for the convertible. And um, if there's any, uh, higher difficulty parts or hardware to access. I'm gonna grab the camera, slow the footage down and point them out to you. But other than that, these worm clamps are quite easy to come off the throttle body and the intake, all right, here for the air box, here for the air box uh, covers, take off the screws for the air box lid. There's a breather hose right there, take off that worm clamp and that breather hose. That's gonna get the upper section of the intake off. I'm gonna work on the rear bumper and uh, the rear exhaust with the wheels off. When you take the wheels off, keep in mind, you are gonna to need to remove these uh, wheel well liners on the back side. Um, the front side up here, you don't have to worry about this front section right now. Um, but the wheels that come off, this liner comes off for this bumper to gain access to the bumper, to remove the bumper. It's gonna be quite, uh, quite easy to take the four screws out of the grills on all five. Uh, this one I think has six because there's an additional two right here in the center. All six and up here in these corners right there. And then four there, four there, those come out. And then, uh, yeah, the bumper's quite easy. But there's a bump, there's screws all on the bottom side of the bumper as well. I'll go ahead and point those out to you when we get to that step, otherwise, Let's get to it. Let me catch you up to speed before I get too far into it. Those three came out for screws for the intake, all right, induction. There's a panel here. There's four screws on it. They're actually quite easy to get to, except for the one that's way back there. Um, take that panel off, right? It was pretty easy, honestly. Um, get this wiring harness here. Two 10 millimeter bolts here and here, all right? Same thing, passenger side for the wiring harness. Under the wiring harness, two 10 millimeter bolts on the air box. 10 millimeter bolt center of air box, 10 millimeter bolt for air box to coolant bracket, all right? 10 millimeter bolts on that passenger side over there too as well. That's gonna get this um, air box uh, able to be removed here soon, okay? So knock off that hardware, and then uh, you just gotta get to the uh, air pump that's down there to unplug that and the hose that the air pump pumps air into, and then uh, pretty much this air box is ready to come up and out. In preparation of taking the air box out, I do want to point out the um, exhaust, heat shield, cover. There's an L bracket with two 10 millimeter um, bolts and one 10 millimeter nut. It's on both sides. You can go ahead and take those off now. It'll uh, help you out in the future whenever you're ready to take off this heat shield. So um, I went ahead and popped those off myself. Moving along. So on the front side, which is facing towards the back of the car, towards the exhaust, that's where your uh, power connector for your air pump is at and uh, the hose, the, the hose. Um, on the 04, my car, this is on the uh, front side of the air box. So uh, my, my mistake on the, the message earlier, but boom. It's that simple. Those two, just like that. Now they're done. This air box is just about ready to come up. 
I'll give you a little pro tip. Uh, although these harnesses are out of the out of the way, uh, ideally unbolted, um, just moving the airbox forward or backwards, shifting it this way, so where you can uh, fish through this harness line under this platform, so that it's very easy for you to lift up and out the airbox um, without these getting hung up on your platform right there. So, just a little pro tip right there for you to move forward. Alright, so we got the air box out and off as you can see it wasn't too hard. Um, just take a little peek in here. Uh, I have seen this before where the harness gets chafed away. Uh, and those are e-gear lines. So keep an eye on that, e-gear owners. Um, at this point, it's time to start preparing the exhaust removal. You can see the exhaust clamps there, a little bit corroded, so I'm going to spray those, uh, try to salvage those, and then um, get these cats and bumper and uh, rear exhaust ready to come off. So I think from here, I'm going to prepare those clamps by spraying them with a uh, like what, um, uh, some kind of penetration oil, and then let those soak, and then I'm going to move to removing the grills and the rear bumper while those are soaking. And of course, finish preparing this heat shield for extraction. Here we go. All right, just to catch y'all up, um, I'm just out here working away. But uh, removing the grills are quite simple. Um, this bumper has a Torx, uh, it's a Torx T10. Actually, no, T15. It was a T15 to get these screws out of here um, and here, right? Allen key for the OEM exhaust tips. The grills are quite simple with the T-bit. Uh, and then you had these screws that hold the skeleton bumper housing to the crash bar, which is this bit right here. Uh, it's a T25 bit that I used to get those out. So there's a couple of them on the inside. You can see they mainly hold the bumper against the crash bar, but usually you have this right here where the inner skeleton cracks off from the inner liner. And when I take the bumper off, I'll show you what I'm talking about on the inner liner, but this is extremely common. Um, this one is completely missing. Uh, every single Gallardo that I've take it apart I've seen that they are broken um, I will also note that these are known for cracking on the Gallardo here there is a fix for them they're easy to find the fix reinforcement on this but uh, just know if you're a Gallardo owner or your future Gallardo owner that is a, that's a known problem um, so just look over your entire framing you know I can, you can see I missed a screw but obviously it's broken off uh, from the skeleton Look over the tire framing to see if there's any screws missing or uh, not done being removed. And at this point, I'm gonna go underneath and I'm gonna remove all the screws that are underneath this uh, bumper, go into the framing of the car here, right? As well as the ones that go onto the rear splash guard. Remember I, earlier I said, we're gonna have to remove the rear splash guard, so, uh, and the wheel liner. So go ahead and uh, get down. There's four of them on here and then two on each side for the splash guard, and then rotating upwards into the bumper liner right here, you have more screws to remove. So I'm gonna get moving on that. Uh, again, um, these are T15 Torx heads on these screws right here for the bumper to the liner. So pretty small, try, uh, try to get a sandwich bag to put all your screws in so you can kind of keep accountability all your hardware because it starts getting kind of intermixed with a bunch of different little screws running around so i just label my little sandwich baggie um what part it is or sometimes if it if it if it's the same hardware from each side but the different side of the car has 
more screws than the other side, like three versus four or whatnot, I would just label what side the car, uh, the screws came from on the car. But other than that, do your best, keep accountability, and drive on. Hey, while you're down here, um, the hardware going all the way across the bumper to include the wheel well splash guards. These are uh, T T20 heads for the Torx. Okay. All right. And here, there's normally a 10 millimeter uh, bolt holding it together. This one was an eight millimeter this time on this car. And here is, you have to unseat the bumper clip right here. It's kind of a pain. And also, when you do so, you have this corner light sitting right at the bumper. Make sure you pull that out. It's rubber, so you're just gonna grab, grab it and then pull, right? It'll remove from your corner light, uh, your corner light on the bumper. This guy right here, you gotta put some pressure behind here, support it, pop it out, and then uh, don't be afraid to finesse it, but um, that's what it's gonna take because it sits inside these grooves right here. Uh, good luck with that. Right, there's a lip, you can set it on right in there while you go to the other side and then make sure it doesn't fall off obviously. But uh, at this point, once I do the other side, this uh, this whole bumper will be ready to just come off and put in storage. All right, another little helping tip. Um, right before you pull the bumper off, there's a wire harness that's gonna shoot down to your, your uh, license plate lights. Um, under the passenger side tail light, there is a wire clip um, and it kinda, it attaches to the, the frame of the car um, by a push lock uh, dowel. I don't know what you call those things. But um, there's a little plastic clip, you have a trigger on it, release the trigger, slide it off the clip that goes into the uh, framing of the car and then un unclip that plug and kind of fish it through so that it's free, uh, free movement whenever you come take the bumper completely off. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, passenger side tail light. Look right underneath it. On the inside, you have this uh, wiring harness right here, clipped into the frame right there, and you see the release clip on top. So I'm gonna try to undo this here. All right, getting a little bit of light in there. Here's the clip that goes with the bumper. Okay, this is the clip that stays uh, in the car. And then there's the little slide on clip. The trigger is on one side. Depress it and push the clip the opposite direction of the trigger, okay? That should help you uh, um, be successful in this a lot faster. Um, so it does not slide in the direction of the trigger. It slides away from the trigger. Then just Continue to finesse this wiring harness. Get it prepared, right? To come out. Um, you can see there's the crash bar. It might be a tie. I've seen these tied to the crash bar right here with zip ties. So whenever you're pulling everything off, just be careful, nice and slow. And then move forward with the uh, removal. All right, got everything loose. Uh, what I do is I support it with my knees. I got a little rolly stool, support it with my knees, grab by two top pillars and pull it off. Just make sure you clear the wheel well fenders, the core panels on this side. Make sure you clear both sides.
There it is. Let's go. All right, it's looking pretty good. Now it's time to start working on the crash bar and the uh, the heat shield for the exhaust right there. Um, as you can see, this this uh, this car has a aftermarket exhaust on it already. Uh, that's got to go. And then um, let's get moving on to this disassembly. You're going to go ahead and use a 10 millimeter right here. There's four going all the way across, and that's going to get this thing nice and loose and ready for removal. And then I will get you the torque spec on uh, the torque bits size on this one here just in one second once I finish these. All right, we get the crash bar off. Um, worth noting, T27 with the 10 millimeter uh, nut on the back side for the tail light on both sides with this bracket right here. Um, there are two Allen key heads on the side you can hit. That also does the job just as well, but these are broken, which is very common. Um, I'm gonna look at uh, maybe getting some epoxy or rebuilding this right here. But um, yeah, crash bar comes off pretty easily after these bolts for the heat shield are gone. And then you just have two, 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 so eight. And then that comes right off. Now it's time to start messing with the exhaust mounting bracket and getting this heat shield off. Let's go. In order to prepare for this rear exhaust section to come off, you need to go into the wheel well and disconnect that clip right there. That's your O2 sensor clip on both sides. Here's a look on the passenger side, the O2 sensor clip for the harness. Once you undo that, you wanna feed it through. You also wanna remove these uh, aluminum heat shields on both sides, 10 millimeter bolts here, under here on the inside, under it on the inside, and this is the fourth one's right here. There, There's four of them. So go ahead and remove the O2 sensor clips and these heat shields with the 10 millimeters and um, it'll help get everything ready for removal on the exhaust side. And then go ahead, pull the sensor harness through here and undo these clamps right here. That will leave you with just the hangers holding up top. This heat shield is gonna come down with the exhaust at the same time at that point. So. Uh, be prepared for this to come together as a unit uh, once you get the exhaust mounts up top undone. This is a 13 millimeter uh, socket. Here you can have a better look at what I'm tapping with the hammer, trying to get these halves to unseat from each other, and sometimes they like to get kind of bind or kind of um, stuck together just by being like wedged. So sometimes hammer works, sometimes popping a flat tip screwdriver in there, separate, separating them like this um, works as well. So put it in there and just turn and then, you know, go back and forth, wedging it out this we'll get them to come undone eventually so just got to keep working it and it walks them out like that there we go all right as you can see i got the o2 sensor off um, the bottom bolt for this exhaust mount bracket, the upper mount bracket, these are on like 06, 07, 08, 09, or I'm sorry, 08, uh, cars. I think they did it in 05 as well. The 04s have the, the secondary bracket right there. And then, oh, he's, he's missing his brackets here. But anyways, 
Um, 17 and 15 up top. And then go ahead and break these loose. And this exhaust will be ready for extraction at that point. So I like the way that went. Um, got a little hung up there on the uh, upper exhaust brackets, but that's fine. Um, now it's time to get to the, uh, the pumpkins, the stock cats. And by doing that, you're gonna need an O2 sensor removal tool. You're gonna have to un unplug the uh, O2 sensors for the front primary um, O2 sensors and then a 10 millimeter wrench um, and hope that the misfire tubes come out of the cats smoothly. Uh, chances of that happening are really low from what I've seen, especially if they're like the mild steel, older style OEM uh, misfire tubes. But um, let me point them out to you and then um, get back to it. And again, 13 millimeter, for the exhaust clamps. That's what I'm gonna use from the uh, cat to the header, that section right there, that clamp right there, I'm gonna throw a 13 on it and crank away and see what happens. So on the stock cat, 10 millimeter, this is your temperature sensor. That was pretty loose, that's okay. Taking it out, finger loose, and that one's done. You can see it all the way in there stem right there okay uh, I'm gonna wait until the cat is completely loose before I move to uh, extract those because look at this one it's pretty loose too very low torque spec because of the uh, the fine threads the soft little threads but that was pretty loose which is all right getting things done here all right, that one's done. Now the misfire tubes, those can be a little pain, but it is this one right here. Right there. Looks a little corroded, honestly. Not looking not looking good so but you know what just thought of something if the temperature sensor was that loose then these right here probably gonna be loose too which so far feels pretty good feeling pretty good yeah this one's gonna come out with no problem whatsoever uh, which I'm really glad about. But either way, I fabricate these misfire tubes, so it would have been no problem. Now, if you if you do if your car does have an issue with these misfire tubes coming out, um, I found it helpful to continue uh, to get the um, cat loose, so you create more space and angle the cat so where you can get your hands in there and then get it set of very thick, you know, strong vice grips and then really clamp down on this B nut right here. Get a good grip on that. You know, I've seen this, uh, I've experienced these stripping because they're so frozen in the OEM cat. So don't be afraid to get some vice grips on there and really clamp down on them to, to extract them. All right, I'm going to bust this off and then move forward with the removal. Yeah, 
about this time I'm ready for a flat tip screwdriver to go right in there and boop, pop that off. So I'm gonna go do that and then uh, I'm gonna access the 10 millimeter misfire tube up front on top. This is the driver's side, by the way. That's the header, that's the cat. Alright, so this one, <clears throat> I got to do the uh, misfire tube and then pull out the temperature sensor and this cat is ready to extract. Oh, and the O2 sensor, of course. Lamborghini has made it nice and easy to access the forward O2 sensor clip up here. Just pull it right up, unclip it, feed the wiring down there, and uh, you can extract the cat with it if you want that way. Rotate this. See sensor out. There we go. Temperature sensor's out. Now, just gotta get to that little uh, misfire tube, which is down in there. Right there. Um, let me see if I can get a wrench on it from here. So I should be able to access that. All right, pulling the cat out was pretty easy. Um, it just comes straight out this way. Make sure all three sensors are undone. Um, and that the O2 sensor, whether you remove it while it's still in the car or you remove it with the cat, just make sure that the cable doesn't get hung up on anything. There we go. There it is. All right, that just about does it for this video. Um, the air box is out, the cats are out, exhaust is off, bumpers off, wheel liners are on for now. I might take them off later, but um, it's a it's a it's a it's a doable uh, process. Um, a couple of hangups here and there, which is. Uh, to be expected <clears throat> the biggest one the biggest pain uh, you're gonna experience are these clamps right here which I'll show you why these these clamps face the most corrosion out of everything uh, oh, other than the misfire tubes but you have Sometimes when they get tightened down, these bars bow inwards. So whenever they go in, you see that? That's supposed to drop down in there. Even this clamp can get horseshoe bowed, all right? So that's supposed to drop down and be fluid. Now, whenever they come out, and because of that bow, they're basically hooking the inside of this clamp uh, bows on the inside. So whenever you go to extract them apart from each other, it's actually quite difficult and it's gonna take finessing. And also, if you can't, if you can't canter one of them, it's gonna jar and bind on the stud and it's not gonna come off again. 
So uh, I just uh, give you caution on that and have patience. All right, so that about does it for today's video. Um, like I said, have patience and take your time with everything. Don't forget to put uh, all your hardware in baggies and label them because it is easy to lose uh, accountability or track of what, what which screw goes where. Um, keep an eye out for my next video. I'm gonna start uh, putting uh, mods on the car and also with my Gallardo. I'm sure you guys might have a, a liking towards the mods that are going on the cars. We have more builds coming to the channel. Uh, we have merch available. Check out autopilotexotics.com if you want to pick up some merch. Uh, we got hoodies. It's fall season. Other than that, hit like, subscribe, and share if you want to stay up to date and follow along in these builds. I appreciate the views. I appreciate you watching. And stay tuned.